so I never realized how many fun Nintendo Entertainment System games there were until I started trying to collect them all. And I'm so thankful that these video game conventions still have plenty out there. So I was finding deals, getting, you know, buy two, get one for free, and just adding some great games into the collection. So first of all, we have Ikari Warriors 2, Victory Road. This one's actually a great game, and it's so much fun. So this is a sequel to Ikari Warriors. So pretty much you're running around and you shoot everything. There are like different end bosses. They are kind of difficult, but a lot of fun. There are amazing sound effects in this game. And the weapon upgrading and even the store are just so much better than the first game. So this really is a great one. Still pretty inexpensive and just a good time. So next up, I found this one. We have this Capcom title. We have Mickey Mouse Capade. And I never realized that I played this one back in the day. So this one is really cool because you have Mickey and Minnie. And you have to maneuver through the different levels. Now, I was never any good at it. But now that I understand what you have to do, it's so much fun going back through it. So pretty much you get to maneuver Mickey and Minnie follows along. So you can kind of position Minnie in different areas to you know take on the damage because it doesn't really affect her as you're going through but it's just a lot of fun in this platforming game and i just love it because you have to jump and you know make sure that she is behind you or else she could potentially fall which in fact will bring you down as well but this is a rather charming game and also another one that's super inexpensive now this one i had to add into my collection i'm still looking for the super nintendo versions but we have Where in Time is Carmen San Diego, and I had to get this big box here because it comes with a desk encyclopedia. Now, that's probably not something that you wanted back in the day when you're playing your games, but I absolutely remember playing Carmen San Diego on all of the computers back in the day at school. You know, just having this right here, this desk encyclopedia, <laughs> it's just crazy. You know, having this stuff and even all of these like extra little inserts and everything else. But right here we have this like little paper that someone actually used when they were playing this game. So that's always cool to find. But I just love all of this stuff. And I love these like box games. So anytime they come with extras like this, I will have to add them complete into the collection. And especially one that was not really that expensive either. But I want to know, did you play Where in Time is Carmen San Diego? Did you get to go through and try and solve some of these mysteries as you're setting aside and going through with your encyclopedia? I just want to know if you guys remember this as well. This was definitely a staple in my childhood. Then on to Thundercade. So this one was a rather interesting game. Definitely inexpensive as well. So pretty much you're on this motorcycle and you're shooting at tanks, people, pretty much everything. Now, I found it very interesting that as you're kind of moving through, it makes it so that you don't have like a set path. You can just kind of roll over everything in this game and there's nothing too crazy or, you know, unique or outstanding when it comes to this particular game. So this is one that I probably won't play much anymore, but it was a fun and interesting, you know, playthrough at least once. But going back and picking it up again, I'm sure that there are going to be plenty on the Nintendo that I will have to find and just add into the collection. Then on to this game, we have this top secret episode. We have Golgo 13. So this one was very interesting because there are different gameplay elements in here. So there's just a lot going on in this where I felt like they had so much potential or maybe if this was like developed a little bit later, they could have did a lot more. So you are this agent. And as you're going through, it turns into like this horizontal shoot 'em up It also turns into this first person gallery shooter from a platforming element. And then there's just so much going on with this whole sniper part where there is blood when you shoot. So that is just insane that they had that back in the day. And there's just so much going on. So I feel like you know, maybe if they would have focused in on a couple of these aspects and tried to not overdo it, maybe it would have turned out a lot better. This game right here definitely does not live up to the hype. This is Magic Johnson's Fast Break. It says slam and jam and basketball action. But there's not really anything too spectacular. 
This is kind of like a minimalistic game. The characters all look the same. There's nothing that stands out in here. You pretty much shoot and block, but there's so many other basketball games that I would rather play instead of some of these like more primitive ones. But I'm sure that if you grew up with these particular sports titles, maybe you're more nostalgic towards them. Or if you like some of the players that were, you know, featured in some of these games, maybe that's what you enjoy a lot more. On to Adventures of Tom Sawyer. So this right here, we have this loosely based on the novel. But this is very interesting because it does take place in a dream sequence. So you have all of these different adventures where, you know, you go around, you have marbles, you have these slingshots that you get to use. I like the part where it's like on the Mississippi River and you're on this raft. And once you get to the end, there is like this big alligator that you have to go against. But there are like haunted mansions in here with demons. You have a gorilla, different monkeys. So it's just kind of like all over the place in this. And I didn't really know about this game. So maybe I'll have to give it a little bit more of a playthrough or try and remember the book and see kind of how it differs from it, you know, from back in the day reading through that. This one right here was another pretty cheap game. This is Rescue, the Embassy Mission. So this one has this like crazy looking, you know, cover on here, but a super cheap game. So pretty much the terrorists have taken over you have to save the hostages and you have to avoid the spotlights at the very beginning. So depending on the difficulty kind of ramps up the gameplay, but you have to look through a scope and you have to like go against a sniper. So you have to shoot the terrorists, not the hostages. But this is such a short game that as you go through kind of has a little bit of a difficult start. But as you go through, you kind of get used to it. But yeah, this is definitely a very extremely short game. So I can see why it has a smaller price tag on it. So I'm definitely thrilled to add eight more Nintendo Entertainment System games into the collection. Some of these big box games are going to be what I really enjoy collecting. You know, they come with some extras or just different things. Some games have letters in them. Some games have encyclopedias. So I can't wait to see what I find next. But a lot of these are still very inexpensive. So I want to know which games do you recommend in a Nintendo Entertainment System? I know I'm going for all of them, but which one should I try and find next? So of course, let me know in the comments down below which game was your favorite in this bunch. And of course, thank you guys for watching. Make sure you like and subscribe. Go ahead and check out all of my other videos and stay tuned for more.